Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, I've been working on my Stillwater fly box lately, and uh, one of the, the most effective patterns that we fish is, you know, a soft tackle, kind of like an AP emerger style, style bug, but maybe with a little bit of bells and whistles. Um, so uh, we we've been playing around with some some of these partridge pelts that we've gotten. Now a partridge pelt is really advantageous. Um, this is kind of hard to see, but I mean, look at all of these feathers. If you buy a pack of partridge, even if it's like two ninety five, um, very rarely are you going to find exactly the type of feather that you're looking for. So with a with a full pelt of partridge, you know the higher grade you can get, the better. Um, but you're going to have thousands and thousands of of usable well you can tie thousands of flies with them um so for this fly instead of using like the shoulders of the bird like uh like you know a lot of soft tackles use if you're imagining the bird i'm kind of coming back further on the the larger feathers of kind of the saddle of the bird and i'm gonna pluck a feather out there so I'll show you what I got. So here you can see the feather. You can see it's got like the brown bar across the top and you got this all this under fluff underneath. And so we're going to use all of these fibers to tie this fly except for this little after shaft feather. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with these too so if you save those or all kinds of leeches and things. They're not super durable, but kind of fun to play with. So that's the feather we, that we've selected. Um, we're gonna start with uh, just putting a little bit of lead wire on here. This is 015. And usually when we're fishing these, we're using a sinking line or you know an intermediate tip or something like that. So a lot of weight isn't necessary. And I'm using purple Danville's 140 denier. And I'll just kind of dress that a little bit here and there. And I want that lead to, to be about right like that. I want it to leave some space around the front of the fly. Nice. Hello, this is Cheech. Is this Cheech's wife? I'm right in the middle of filming a video. In fact, this is being recorded right now. How may I help you, ma'am? No, I will not make out with you. I'm right in the middle of a video. This is going to go in there. So, okay, fine. I have a reggae concert with my wife tonight. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So we're going to go back to the tail and this this under fluff or the marabouish part of the of the feather can actually be used. So I'm going to clean off, you know, about that much and then all the way up to where the good feathers start. I'm going to peel that stuff off. So I've cleaned off that much of the feather. Kind of squish those together and cut off the the little parts that were stuck to the stem. And I'm going to tie that on right here as the tail. See if I can get a little bit more length out of it. So it doesn't have to be super long at all. It's just kind of a little bit of fluff. So that's our tail on this. The next part is we're going to rib this with some medium Vivas holographic tinsel in purple. take that back and you see I have a little bit of a bump right here um, but uh, that's not that big of a deal because this is going to be a dubbing body so the body is going to be nature spirit uh, snowshoe rabbit foot dubbing 
and it's a really super buggy dubbing we've we've used it on a whole bunch of stuff on dry flies nymphs about everything and they have a color called hair's ear and this is my favorite color of this by far so i'm going to take off a healthy clump of it and i'm going to start building a body and the body should taper from back to front and this dubbing is just super easy to dub on very smooth okay once i have that dubbed on i'm going to move it up to the thread and start wrapping this forward and if you have to go over it couple times to build up that taper that's fine you, you don't want to just take it directly forward you want to make sure that you're you're building up a little bit of a taper so we're going to take it about to right here And then I'm going to just spiral wrap this through and I'm just going to use the rotary feature of my trusty mongoose vise. That last one didn't want to cooperate. So once we have it to this point, we give it a nice little brush. And this is where this dubbing really shines and the, the purple just kind of gives it a little bit of a hint of color. Um, now, when I tie these in different color combos, I typically will keep everything natural colored, the, the partridge and the body and then I'll change the color of the thread and the tinsel. So other colors that I've done are red, maroon, pink, green, a bunch of cool colors like that. Now just to kind of give it a little bit more UV-ish flash, I'm going to take some UV brown eye stub and it has kind of like some purples and blues in it. And I'm going to just create or build up a clump right here and it's not dubbed extremely tight on my thread so that when I pick it out like this it picks out and those fibers kind of blend in with the, the rabbit just kind of like that so now we're going to create a collar soft tackle collar out of the partridge so I've got my the rest of my feather, and I'm going to create a tie-in point up at the tip, just like this. And I'm going to tie it in right here. And it's important that you tie it in pretty tight so that when you're folding the fibers back that, that it doesn't pull out. Okay, so this is a really delicate feather at this point. And if I... If I pulled too hard on it, it would just break. So the idea is we're going to want to fold these fibers back this way to hold them at the proper angle so when we start wrapping it, they'll lay right. So the best way to do that is just kind of gently hold this up and then pinch those fibers back. But as you pinch, you kind of roll your fingers back and forth to, to make sure that the fibers are folded back on both sides of the stem. If you don't roll your fingers, you'll fold one side of the fibers back, but not the other. So that's that's pretty good right there. So I'll just start wrapping that. And you notice I, I'm not using hackle pliers for this. I just feel like I have better better feel for it with my fingers. And then I just stroke it back after every couple of wraps. I'll tie that off and then I'm just going to build a little bit of a head here and I want to make sure my threads nice and flat so I've unwound it a little bit 
looks like I had a little straggler. Alright, so I've unwound it a little bit and I'm just going to build up a nice clean head and whip finish it. Curtis's desk is a mess. So that's basically it. Um, and again, I, I typically just stick to this, this coloration with the natural color. And I will add just a little bit of a hit of some water-based head cement on this bad boy. Or you could add some Loon Flow to kind of make it a shiny head. But... That's basically it. So it's a pretty basic pattern. You can see it's got, you know, all the right highlights in there. Um, and I'm sure that this would work in rivers as well. We typically fish it in lakes, though.